Planner friends, it's Nia. Welcome to Life with Nia. Today I am going over, PD says hello, I am going over my planner consultation with cloth and paper and flipping through my half letter planner, which is the one that I have here in the cloth and paper contoured agenda. So, Let's talk about the planner consultation and please forgive me this video is long overdue. I had my planner consultation back in July. Um, it was a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute consultation. And so to give you a little background on how the planner consultations work with cloth and paper, they are $75. When I purchased my consultation, they were on sale for $50. Um, I don't know if there is a current special running. I believe in September they were $75, but you could, um, when you purchased a consultation, you would receive a $25 like gift card to spend with cloth and paper. So I'm not sure if there's anything going right now, but um, I would definitely check that out. Um, it's well worth the amount spent before you have your actual one-on-one. Um, -on -one, there is a questionnaire for you to fill out. So I completed the questionnaire and sent that in in advance, um, which helps your consultant know what um, to focus on for your consultation, what you use your planner for, what your pain points are, and how to best help you. Um, so that was done in advance. Then I had my one-on-one. -on -one. It's um, a 30-minute one-on-one. There are four consultants with cloth and paper. You can choose your consultant, um, and you go in, you look at their calendar, you pick your date and time. I selected um, Aisha Ward, and um, she is um, at Planner Girls Rock on Instagram if you want to follow her. I follow all of the um, consultants. So Arinthia, Pasha, and Bari are the other three consultants. Um, and I just felt like Aisha's style most aligned with my, mine and I like the things that she posts. Um, it was very hard to select a person though. So um, that was who I ended up going with. Had a really great conversation talking about what some of my needs were and how I wanted to use my planner more effectively. And then after the consultation, about a week later, I received a planner product guide, which is this. And part of that planner product guide, it lists out different products that are recommended for me based on my consultation. Some of them I already had, um, some of them I purchased, some of them I did not purchase. <clears throat> then the, the other part of the product guide is the structure, which tells you how to lay out your planner to make it most effective for you. This guide also provides you with um, ways to use different products. So for example, um, one of the recommendations was to use the inbox planner inserts to keep track of weekly items that you need to see at a glance, categorize your items between personal work um, and your sticker shop and use it as reminders or follow up items. Um, think of the task delegation inserts as your one stop shop to, for your master to do list. Use it in conjunction with your monthly or weekly planning. Like everything was meticulously set up in that manner. This is how I envision you best using this item based off of the information that you provided me as to what your needs are. And then there's also, I didn't even get this far, um, but there were links to videos and blog posts. I didn't even look at all these. Um, it's just really super comprehensive and um, I found it to be very effective. So that is the consultation piece. So I redid my half letter. Did I say A5 at the beginning? I have a half letter. Um, I do have an A5. So let me clarify as well. 
So I took the suggestions in the planner product guide that was customized for me. And in, you see how chunky this is? This is like not even closing. So I could not put everything in here based off of the suggestions and, and how I wanted things. So I did split up some things um, and put them into an A5. So I kind of have an A5 for goal setting, wellness, um, habit tracking, mood tracking, and that type of thing, which was part of this um, product guide and structure. So there were some things... Um, in the structure like this whole miscellaneous section where you've got your beauty dashboard that's something that I actually did not get journaling inserts I put it in the A5 habit tracker inserts A5 reading log inserts A5 meal planner is in my half letter um, so I just sort of those were also things I didn't want to take with me so if I'm gonna take my half letter with me I don't want my journaling, something that's personal to me, um, if my planner should, heavens forbid, get lost, to just be out there for the world to read. So that was another thought. So this is the stuff that I need on a day-to-day -day basis that I'm good with it going with me on the go. So I've got my half letter here. I keep my A5 bedside. So let's flip through and see what we've got. So inside, um, I am big on pretty things, I guess you would say, and um, I love journaling cards, and I love to layer pieces. So I've got some journaling cards here, and um, I've got some cards like tucked into the pocket. So here's like an October calendar, and um, it's got this what's on your mind card behind it, so that... I can see the calendar on the clear card. Um, I've got some post-it notes tucked in behind here. And just just like it's more deco in the pockets. They're not functional at all. It's just pretty things to really look at. Okay, so then getting into our planner. I have um, what was recommended to me was the one and a half inch rings which I felt like were entirely too big but you see they're perfect because I've got a ton of stuff on there um, I've got the clear covers and I think I still have the paper on here I don't think I pulled it off and I'm not going to pull it off got my little ollie clip um, there's luxury and simplicity. This is like one of my favorites and I've just sort of layered some journaling cards, um, and another Ollie clip. I, this is my all time favorite heavy as the head that wears the crown. So that's like what I love to see when I first open up my planner and I've got, um, the Ollie clips sort of serve the purpose of keeping things, um, together. So like the, um, dashboard is clipped to the clear plastic cover. So inside here, I've got this dashboard that I've had for quite some time. Um, I've got my word of the year is brave. So I've got this um, vellum sheet that says fear is temporary, regret is forever. And then behind that is my word of the year, brave. And um, again, I've layered. So I've got the vellum, the cardstock, and then a paper divider as well. Cardstock paper divider. Um, then I have this journaling card here. And the whole first section of my planner is just completely deco. There's nothing functional about it. So you got planner gang, planner culture, plan gang. Um, got my name. You've got um, journaling cards, 2021 year at a glance calendar. And then um, we get into the first section, which is the schedule. And I tried to, to follow the tabs as closely as possible. 
um, but it was not 100% possible. This is one of my favorite die cuts, and I just feel like it's perfect with the I Am um, dashboard. So we've got that there. I still have September in here. I'll be taking it out soon. And the ink blot is also one of my favorites. Um, I don't believe it's available any longer, but I have like three of these, I think, in here. And then I've got them for all my little other planners as well. And so I clip together the ink blot with the September vellum and the um, September, it's got a top tab up here with the month. Um, paper, cardboard, cardstock, whatever you want to call it, um, divider. And then I also have a September calendar here. Um, I like to use these little half month. So I've got like August, September. They usually, the same stuff gets added back on again. So um, I keep that at the beginning. Yeah, your September overview month at a glance and then I use the vertical line weeklies I'm not minimalist at all when it comes to my half letter I like the deco so every week I do decorate um, these are again vertical line weekly cloth and paper inserts Monday start and I did it's not in here um, I think August was the last month. I was trying out the horizontals for a little bit because they were coming in the subscription box, uh, but I decided that the vertical is my favorite, so I'm sticking with that. The next, um, it's still kind of the same section, but what I did was I sectioned it off with the Today um, dashboard, and I believe this is the one that is dry erase, so you can write on here as well. But what I did was like, just for the typically the month that I'm in, which is not September any longer, I haven't updated this, but typically for the month that I, I'm in, I will have, I plan to have this sectioned off this way, and then dailies, um, and these are undated, so I can use them as I need to as part of the month, if that makes sense. So what I'll end up doing when I take September out is moving these dailies and the Today Dashboard to October. And I have quite a few in here. Um, if I needed space, I could take some of those out. So then we have October, same concept with the cover. Um, you've got the vellum, the cardstock, and the divider. And then on this one, um, this was in September and I kind of just moved it all. I've got like my post-its and my... Um, like if I need to have notes, the circle, post-its, and whatnot. Um, and October is the same as September. You've got your overview, you've got your month at a glance, and then your vertical lined weeklies, prepping for next week. And so that's what they look like when they're blank. And then I've already put November in here. I don't have my, my ink blot yet, but... Um, once I take September out, I'll put it over November, and then I've got my November calendars ready to go. So that is my schedule section. The next section is my lists, and so I just have a little marble dashboard here. And I've got the digital declutter, which I really haven't used just yet. Um, I have, I believe this is the inbox insert also haven't used just yet and I've got a couple of those sheets in here and then I just really like this um, dashboard so I put that in there as well and I find that this is a good way to put in putting in it like a dashboard is a good way to section off or transition to something else so transitioning from this to um, task delegation and I really like these inserts so I can put down all the tasks and then what the priority tasks are, what the non-priority tasks are, and due dates. And I did not cover up some stuff, so I'm not going to show it because it is related to um, upcoming uh, planner sesh boxes. So we'll keep all that a secret. 
Next, I have the project tab, and so I have a goals dashboard here. I have some project management inserts, and I plan to use this space just for ideas for like uh, Studio Blisco, planner sesh boxes, um, future stationary items that I want to add to the shop, and any other projects that I'm working on. Got some note paper and um, quite a bit of note paper actually and then we get a um, inbox uh, vellum it's like a really heavy vellum and I just put this uh, journaling card on top of it because I thought it was pretty and then we have some dot grid paper and so again I used the dashboard to sort of section off and transition between the two types of note paper so this is lined I think it's the Cornell notes and this is dot grid so then the next section is my finance section um, and I've got the it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich dashboard and I just felt like that quote was fitting for finances and I have um, part of the cloth and paper finance bundle in here and part of a bundle that I got from um, Elamon Paper Co. It's her collaboration with Maddie Plans. So for the cloth and paper, um, you get like, I believe, a whole year. And so I pulled out the pieces that I thought I would use, um, but I had not been using my half letter, so these things went unused. But um, I'm trying to get into using them more frequently. So there's a place for you to reflect um, for your month what your priorities are, like a word of the month, a monthly budget, starting debt, total applied to debt, what's paid off, no spend days, and ending debt. There's a place for each day to write something down with regards to gratitude. And then I love the savings challenge. You can do just the 26 weeks and save 3920 um, or you can do 52 weeks and save 10000 And it gives you... Like over on this side, you can write in what you actually saved. And so I like that. I kind of want to like find somebody to recreate this for me. Because I don't want the whole bundle, but I want those two things. And that is also another reason why I haven't written on there. And then this is also part of the savings tracker. I may not write on those. I just may keep them and write it somewhere else separately. Because I find like it's useful, but then I don't want to write on it. Which defeats the whole purpose of having a planner. But here we are. Anyway, another dashboard to section out my, um, it's still in the finance section, but transitions to the next portion of it. So I have this dashboard that says minding the business that pays me. And this is the Maddie Plans um, Elamon Paper Co. finance bundle. Um, I've already picked up one of these for 2022 as well. And so what I do here is I record my Etsy income each week. And it has January through March, April through May, June through, um, or July through September, October through December. And then there are 12 sheets of business expenses. I fell off in after February. Um, <laughs> and I did not get back on until August. And I did not write down nearly everything. August, September, um, October, and then we'll have November and December. And then there is a place to summarize your, do your annual financial review. And so you can do your total income, your bills, expenses, other expenses, starting balance, ending balance. And you can reflect at what your highest and lowest income were and your highest and lowest expenses. And so I like this bundle um, and I get good use out of it. Then I have this purchase tracker. And I've got a few sheets of that in there. This is another place where I'd like a little divider to sort of section it off. Um, but I put in probably like five sheets of the purchase tracker. So I have a place to put down the date, description, category, and amount. Then we get into the goals and ideas section. And I put here the Atelier dashboard and then a Studio Bliss Co. Um, divider as well that I had custom made. And there's nothing in this section. Um, I moved the goals into the A5. But I still like the layer and the look, so it's there. 
Then I have the travel um, dashboard, the um, Anthony Bourdain quote, that travel changes you as you move through this life and this world. You change things slightly. You leave marks behind, however small, and in return, life and travel leaves marks on you. I just really like that. So I added that in. I've also got, I think it's the bold dashboard um, behind here. And um, it's just for layering. I've got some post-it notes. Um, I made my list of all the fall television shows and what date they were coming on because I watch a lot of TV, probably entirely too much, and I needed to drag it somehow. So this is just like my little miscellaneous section, which is what it's actually labeled as miscellaneous. So got that. Some more TV stuff. Have my cloth and paper. Um, kind of like, this is kind of like a per what the purchase tracker should be used for. But um, these were some of the things as part of my consultation that I wanted to add and as I was putting things together. And then I've got like a cloth and paper wish list here. I've got a Black Friday list going. Um, and then the rest of this is like blank dot grid. I used a ruler um, to section off. And then I have my meal planner, which I have not been using. I started to use it and I whited it out. Um, cause I wrote down one thing and then I went back two weeks later and realized that I had totally forgotten about it. I did really good when this was outside of my planner and another separate little planner. So I'm not sure why I'm struggling to get back on track with it, but I love the meal planning and having the grocery list attached to it. And then I like to use the half sheet to, um, take the items that may be on here when I go to the grocery store instead of taking the whole planner in there I can just pull this little sheet out and just take that into the store with me so that is the purpose of that then after the grocery list section I've got another dashboard here this is the changes dashboard along with the vellum that says I'm the architect of the days that haven't happened yet and then we transition into a little reading log, which I also do have in the A5. And then after the reading log, we have a couple of the um, pockets. This one is just more decorative. So I've got my name and then on the back of that card is my contact info. So should my planner get lost, if somebody is looking at it, um, they would find my info on the back of that card. Um, and then I just got some cute journaling cards in there on the back side. I've got some page flags, um, square flags, matchstick page flags, spotlight page flags, page flags for days. And then I've got some here in this pocket as well. And I've got a studio bliss co card, which again has my contact info on it. And then, um, these are all rose colored days, like on the back of her business cards. It's always like really pretty sayings like this. So this one says good vibes only. I've got one here that says gold digger. Um, so I love those for decorative purposes. And I actually think that I'm going to take this one and put it, I might do some double sided tape. Um, but so now I've got the good vibes only and then the gold digger. I'm going to flip that around. Um, so. Okay. I've got a um, divider here. And then disregard my little piece of newspaper. Sometimes I like to write on paper. I use it sort of like as a pencil board. I've got a pocket back here. I've got some post-its in my pocket. I've got some page flags. Gotta have the iridescent ink. Um, some drops. Some stickers. An inbox zero. This is stickers and then this is some 
flares, and a journaling card. So that's what's in that pocket. And then um, on the back, we've got a few more journaling cards, and I've got the iconic uh, dashboard here. And then on the back of that, I've got some more post it notes. One last journaling card. I've got two pins in here. I'm probably going to swap out the crystal pin. Um, but I like to carry a uni pin. It's just tucked on the inside of the um, pin loop. Um, and the uni pin works nicely for the transparent page flags. Um, this is an O2. My preference is the O3, but I will take what I can get as long as it works on the transparents. So that is my cloth and paper, not really cloth and paper, but largely cloth and paper, half letter planner. Um, not quite my everyday carry, um, cause I'm still trying to find the right thing to carry it in the right bag, the right whatever, but it is somewhere that I go to every day to check in and Make sure that I'm in the right place at the right time, that I know what is going on with life, and I absolutely love it. Um, the structure and setup very, very closely mirrors what was um, suggested for my, from my um, consultation. And so to give you an idea, so like uh, disregarding, disregarding all the decorative stuff because that was not suggested at all because cloth and paper is more on the minimalistic style. Um, first thing was like the 2021 dashboard. So if we start, um, I guess here, 2021 dashboard, and then it was your schedule. So if you skip the deco, then we have schedule. And for me, that is, um, it's, you know, suggests the monthly top tab dividers, um, I'm not using the, it was black, glass plastic was suggested, but I already had the paper, so I'm going to keep using the paper. Um, then 2021 dated planner inserts vertical lined weekly, that's what I have in here. Um, the today tab dry erase, that's what I have here. And then the undated planner inserts. That's just to give you an idea. It pretty much follows that whole the whole setup follows what was outlined for me um, on this planner guide structure spreadsheet. So, um, I think I, ever since I set it up this way, I've just gotten so much more use out of it, and it has just really been working well for me. Um, so, yeah, that is where we're at with our um, half letter planner. It's been a really long time since I've done a flip through and I had not done a flip through since I, um, had the planner consultation. I want to say I did one like a year ago. So, um, definitely long overdue. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on the planner consultation or on my half letter setup, PD says bye. Um, or where I, um, got something from, feel free to post that down below. I am more than happy to share and, um, answer any questions that you may have. I'm also always open to any feedback that you may have or suggestions. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.